Welcome to the Interrogation True Crime Stories Podcast. All the stories told on this show are either fabricated, alleged, or didn't happen at all, and shouldn't be used in the court of law. We hope. All right, welcome to the Interrogation True Crime Stories podcast. I'm your host, Corey David. Today we have a special, special guest with us, uh, Lisa Curry. Y'all, what's up, Lisa? Hi, how are you? Um, so, I mean, we kind of were talking about stuff yeah. like before we started, uh-huh. but everything's great. So in addition to the trip I've got coming to v- uh, going to Vietnam, we actually just did um, a live version of interrogation on Saturday down oh, at, the, cool. at the secret group in Houston. Have you been down there? I have not. It's it's a really cool club. Um, very indie, kind of like more like mm-hmm. punk rock than like an improv right. or um, a big a funny bone or something like that. Nice. Um, they get really good people down there. But uh, so for the live version of the show, um, we have three comics tell stories about crimes they committed, and then we um, we come back on stage, and then we and the audience get to ask them questions about what happened uh-huh. afterwards. And then at the beginning of the show, we have everybody, te- I, I give my phone number to everybody and people mm-hmm. can text in their own crimes anonymously that we like uh-huh. read on stage. So I love it. It's it's That's a great. fun show. Um, and we, we love crime. Like, I know, it's fun. <laughs> you pick the right person for this. Perfect. Yeah. And that was the, <laughs> the idea behind it, like initially was I wanted to do a storytelling show that, and a lot of them, unless they have a theme, like that, this, I don't know. They're not that mm-hmm. interesting to me. Yeah. So when we were thinking about it, the whole idea was crimes are inherently funny. Like even if you mm-hmm. haven't written a bunch of punchlines for whatever story you want to tell. And they're mostly morally correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is like, it, I think most people are just intrigued by, it's like why true crime's popular for in, in, uh-huh. across lots of platforms, right? It's like mm-hmm. people are just very intrigued by things that either they wouldn't do themselves or people admitting something stupid that happened um or yeah just kind of like uh just inquisitively um figuring out like why somebody would do what they did or just a weird yeah absolutely so um it was great i think it was the biggest one we've ever done we had like 130 people out so it was really fun and like nice and like we were talking about with your that's show so cool on, mm-hmm. it's really nice and like rewarding when you come up with an idea and it's like kind of paying off you know yeah Absolutely. It's, uh, it's so, so sa- satisfying. And it feels weird sometimes, I think, with comedy stuff, because nothing is tangible, where I'm like, I, I grew up with, but like all brothers, my my family builds buildings for a living. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like they're all iron workers, they're building fucking skyscrapers. And so, um, and I've done like a lot of hands on work, with my family, not, I'm not building skyscrapers, but like, you know, helping build a deck or whatever. And there it's hard. It's actually feels impossible to replicate that satisfaction of like making something that is tangible. Like you can Um, see the final product. Like you've put all this work into it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like when I recorded my album, I was like, Oh, I have a thing. I have a thing that I completed Mm -hmm. and it's, it's done. Did and it's for CDs? people to enjoy. Did you get CDs I did not. <laughs> I did not because I was like, I'm not carrying these around any fucking where. But I I have a special place in my heart for liners liner notes because I grew up with CDs. Yeah. You know, so I made these really nice um like square postcards with the album cover on the front and then the back has liner notes. So whenever somebody like buys an album on Bandcamp or whatever. I offer to send them a postcard or if they're at a, if they come to a live show, I sell the album because it has a download code on the back of some of them. So, yeah, I mean, I was always, I've always been in the same boat. Like I've always really loved album art and I love poster mm-hmm. art from like tours mm-hmm. and um, like bands that I really enjoy if I go see yeah. or whatever. And it is really cool to have like your own little piece of art that's representative of like something you created, like mm-hmm. your comedy album or like I'm getting a poster designed right now. That's kind of a um, collage of a bunch of my different bits Mm -hmm. that people can buy as merch because i've always thought like comedy posters um if it's a picture of just somebody's face like Mm -hmm. i don't love that as much sure yeah like actually just hang that up in their apartment it's like yeah but i love the idea of like creating this cool piece of art that is representative of somebody like either enjoying what you do yeah or they had a great time like absolutely see you so it's really fun 
So just to give everybody a little bit of background, I mean, we just met a couple of weeks ago when we were mm-hmm. both in New York. Um, so what was that? I mean, because you live in LA, right? Uh huh. And what was that experience? How often do you go to New York? Like, what's like what I was experience like this past? Love time? it out there. I'm. Well, that was kind of a last minute trip, so I wasn't able to book as many spots as I would like to have. Um, but I lived out there for seven months or like eight months in like 2015. And then I lived out there again for a couple months at the beginning of 2021. I just kind of, it's harder now because I have a dog, I have a German shepherd, but before I'd be like, oh, I'll fuck off to New York for, I've lived there for like months at a time here (laughs) and there. Um, this year I'm trying to get out there once a month um, because I just want to be out there more often. Yeah. So and you I'm want to start working there as, again in a few weeks. Yeah. 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 You want to start working in certain places. Like I know you'd mentioned, like you want to get into the cellar and to be a big yeah. and be really cool. And some friends have recommended me to the cellar, but uh, a friend that works there regularly, like every weekend was like, oh, hey, SD doesn't want to pass anyone that's not here more often because if you're mm-hmm. only here twice a year, what is that? 10 spots all year, sure. it's not, it's not really worth her time. So mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, got it. No problem. Cause I'm like, if I could get past at the seller, that would more than pay for my ticket out there. Of course. And it's just, I love it there. And I have a free place to stay in the village. Like, why wouldn't I you might as well be there all the time? Yeah. Well, because it is hard, you know, it's a cross country mm-hmm. flight. You have a dog, you know, like yeah. it'd be great if you could put yourself in two places at once. But what I, a lot of, a lot of the people that aren't like into comedy or they aren't in the industry or whatever, they don't realize like how big of an accomplishment things like that are, you know, where yeah. you, know, you might not be there all the time, but man, to get past there would just feel really amazing. Right. Huge. Feel like you accomplished something, like, something awesome. And it's a cool place to perform. Yeah. I mean, the crowds are, every show is sold out. The crowds are insane. It's so good. Um, yeah, it's, it's excellent. Yeah. And I really, and I'm like, so there's so many people that I, God, this sounds so corny, but look up to that work there. Like Dave Attell is there mm. constantly. And I'm like, to be on the same lineup with him regularly would be crazy to me. That would like, he's so fucking good. Yeah. It's also, it's nice to know that you can like hang with that crowd. Right. Yeah. Like, I had one of those moments um, just when I was on tour in South and I was doing this uh, place in Savannah, Georgia. And it was one of like my first kind of really longer headlining spots that I'd done mm-hmm. on the road. I was doing like 45 and um, I felt pretty good going into it, but then you know, it's a long drive. I'm starting to get this like weird imposter syndrome. I see the lineup of like who was just there before me and like Uh who's going to be there after me. And I'm like, I'm a fraud. Like I don't deserve it. (laughs) I I think the one, the the one saving thing with that is I think everyone thinks they're a fraud. You just kind of keep going. (laughs) It's the people that don't think they're a fraud. They're psychos. Anyone that's like, I'm the fucking greatest. I'm like, you're unwell actually. Yeah. Just all zanned up. Or just yeah. haven't had a retrospective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Haven't, haven't had like a thought about like who I am as a person in quite some time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little awareness. So I know um, that you've worked on some TV shows. Like you opened for Jim Jeffries quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Like where do you where are you spending most of your time these days? Is it mostly on stage performing, or is it mostly writing um, for shows and, and yeah, it, stuff? Yeah, it kind of tipped last year into. What's funny is like I started writing and started submitting packets because I felt at the time, well, I'm a better writer than a performer. I'm stronger. So that'll be the way I break into the industry. And it was. I mean, that like Jim Jeffrey show was what launched me out of fucking restaurant jobs and shit. Um, <laughs> how did that go then, down? I mean, how did that go down? Like, what, was it just a matter of submitting something or did you meet somebody that worked? Yeah, I. it was... Um, they were hiring one and the head writer, Jason Reich, uh, is a good friend of Sarah Schaefer, who's a good friend of mine. And so Sarah sent along the packet info to me and a handful of other friends. And um, I sent that in. And then I ran into Nikki Glazer. Actually, I was in New York and I ran into her at the cellar and she had asked me to write roast jokes for her. And I so I run into her and I was like, hey, I'm so sorry. I haven't gotten those jokes to you yet. I was working on a packet this week, but I'll like, you know, start them now. And she was like, no problem. Um, which by the way, she didn't end up buying any jokes off of like, I'm not, I don't want to claim that. I don't want to claim the jokes. Although somebody from comedy central was like, Oh, we were going to use one of yours. And then it got cut for time. So like, 
listen i just want to <laughs> clarify all of this for some reason you don't need to i mean yeah, I, I, don't thing, okay, I don't know a lot why. Of, what some people might not know is that like you submit stuff doesn't mean they're gonna use it you know but it's yeah, still yeah, cool yeah. to be asked you know and i'm not look and she she writes a fucking ton but she's also somebody that's like hey if you've got one and i love it and i use it on tv i'll pay you for it uh, which it is what everybody does on all yeah. of those shows um especially for roast God, stuff, you know you're just yeah that was such a weird as possible yeah i'm like doing such a weird aside because i'm like no like i'm <laughs> good enough that somebody would ask me also i don't want to take credit for the ones that aired because none of them were mine like uh -huh. whatever um anyway so i ran into her told her i was doing this packet and she goes oh what was the packet for and i go jim jeffrey show and this is the kind of person she is. She immediately picks up her phone. She goes, hold on a second. She knew people on the production team because they had worked on Not Safe. Mm -hmm. And so she emails immediately in front of me this glowing recommendation. And she's like, you have to check out Lisa Curry, blah, blah, blah. And I think that that, I mean, I still am really proud of my packet. I think I nailed it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think that that helped me get an interview, obviously. Yeah. You know, nobody's going to be like, ah, fuck you. <laughs> yeah <laughs> no your I recommendation doesn't mean shit well that stuff always helps isn't that like how it goes like with i mean stand up as well like somebody can send me a tape i mean for the show that i book here and like I'll, i might watch it but if you have mm -hmm. like some vouches from people that like i know and i really like mm -hmm. then like that's gonna go like way farther than just some like five minute tape that you send me yeah you know so I think well, and also part of what they're looking for on a tv show and this it's funny because I, when I got the interview, I asked a couple of friends, like, do you have advice for it? I'm, I am terrible in interviews. I cannot stress enough. I am one of the worst interviewers ever where you, if you saw me interviewing, you'd be like, no way. She just said that there's not a fucking chance that you that's mean like real. interviewing for a job or just like, yeah. In interviewing for jobs. I oh, have okay. no idea. <laughs> I, I, say, have, I think you're doing fine. <laughs> no idea what I'm doing in job interviews. And, uh, Everyone was like, oh, they just want to see that, like, you're cool and normal and you're a good hang. And I'm like, that can't be true. There's going to be, like, trick questions. And that is what it is. They're just feeling out your vibe because you're going to be in a room with people all fucking day, all week. Mm -hmm. And they want to make sure that you're not nuts and that you don't smell like shit and whatever. <laughs> and so part of what Nikki wrote that is something I wouldn't have thought of ever writing for somebody or to ask for is she's like, hey, she's a good hang, like she's funny and normal and whatever. And I'm like, Oh yeah, that's part of it. Yeah. Um, so if you're out there and you're recommending somebody for a writing job, that's part of it, guys, you got to write that in there. Then um, if you have a thought you're like, I don't know. I don't think I'm that cool. Like, I don't think <laughs> I'm that great of a hang. Yeah. I was like, Oh, I don't think this is accurate. When she <laughs> wrote it and she was like, she's so funny. I asked her to submit jokes for this thing. And I'm like, nah, that, happened but it's not mm. real <laughs> yeah. and just for anybody that isn't isn't um familiar because i do think it's an interesting part of the a business that a lot of people don't know mm. about like what is a typical packet kind of look like i know every show is kind of different but um the, you know for something without revealing too much if you can't or whatever oh like, yeah yeah um, what was, what well, was for that, that, what's that like for that round it was like pick something in the news and write write like a one well, this is very, th it was a very easy packet compared to some other packets. Like it was like, write um, one page of like a political, not not like sociopolitical monologue uh, off of something in the news. Like, you know, like you would see for Jim Jeffrey show or the daily show or whatever, where it's like monologue with pictures over mm. the shoulder, whatever. Um, and then it was like, write one rant for Jim. And at the time, it was, there was a lot of protests in Hong Kong over like Hong Kong remaining split from China. Right. In their little deal. So I wrote my monologue on that. And then it was also at a time when like politicians were getting yelled at in public. And so I wrote a rant <laughs> for Jim based on that. Um <laughs> Because I do think we should harass them. If they're not, listen, we have their, they work for us. Correct. We have their contact information. Mm -hmm. They do not 
listen to our calls or letters or protests or anything. So fuck them, egg their house, spit in their food, uh, scream at them, and ar- make them so fucking uncomfortable that they don't want to be politicians anymore. Well, That's- you figure these people are making decisions about our lives, but there's a veil between us and them, right? Yes. We don't really get that line of communication. Yes. So when we get the opportunity, be like, hey, how about this goddamn pothole down the street? Also, the taxes are shit. And hey, can you do something about healthcare? All right, cool. See ya. Just I my <laughs> never ending thing is screaming about healthcare because I'm like, how fucking dare you vote that we don't get healthcare and you do? We mm-hmm. vote and then we we pay for your healthcare. These people should have no peace. They should yeah. feel no peace. They shouldn't be able to sleep at night. They should be on 10 different prescriptions because they can't function because they're so anxious and scared all the time. And I'm not exaggerating at all. I see why you got the job. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so you got so you got the gig with Jim Jeffries. It was a huge mm-hmm. boost for you. And then mm-hmm. is it still a comb- kind of a combination of like touring, doing local stuff? Oh, yeah. I, LA, um, or is it what, what else you got going on? I... I have since then just been like almost exclusively doing stand up and I was still doing a lot of packets. I got within the last the year of getting Jim Jeffrey's show, I I interviewed for three head writer jobs, all of which reached out to me, all of which I was down to the final two. And then I didn't get any of them. And I'm like, I'm I'm now I'm homicidal. I can't <laughs> handle this anymore. Yeah. And I had already been like working on developing a couple of my own shows. So now, I mean, as much as I'm kind of running on fumes financially, somebody please staff me or book me. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I can't, not, I can't, like I would do another packet, but I'm just like, that seems, it seems like with where I'm at and some of the contacts I have, I'm like, oh, it's maybe I should just bet on myself instead mm-hmm. and like take whatever because a packet will take a fucking week to do if not longer so i'm like i will take that week that i would have done the packet and instead pour all that time and energy into developing a show that i'm gonna pitch because i'm like i'd rather i also want to be on camera more so i'm like i'm pitching a lot of shows that have me as the host so if anyone out there is looking to buy a tv show I have six of them ready to show you. So, <laughs> and in the meantime, and I'm working on two more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the, in the meantime, we'll just put your Venmo in the show notes. <laughs> exactly. It's the same as my Instagram. <laughs> Feel free. I'll you know, write you a joke. <laughs> yeah. If you want to get her something nice on Amazon, maybe just some, some basic necessities like toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. No shit. I'm like, I'm okay, but I need to sell a show by April. So. Yeah. <laughs> I've got faith in you. You're a very funny person. And <laughs> Thank you. Like, yeah, already very accomplished. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Let's get into some dumb crimes that I found mm-hmm. on the internet. Um, this one has hit a little close to home for me because I've kind of made this mistake before. Um, the mm-hmm. Tyson Foods CFO pleads guilty to two charges after falling asleep inside a stranger's house. Any first impressions there? I don't understand why he's being prosecuted for that. For who's getting in trouble for a fucking nap, man? I'm breaking Come and entering, on. I guess. But I, I mean, did he break anything? I don't. Well, we can. It we shouldn't can... be breaking and entering. They should split those up. Just like just entering. <laughs> just I entered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I'm going uh, for a stroll, man. What's the big deal? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's just said that he's embarrassed. This was an incident inconsistent with our company our company values and my personal values. Oh, you mean everybody at Tyson's Chicken isn't just falling asleep in random Sir, you guys houses? Are, you're keeping chickens in horrific conditions and then slaughtering them. I think somebody can take a little nap on a stranger's couch. Give me a fucking break. I'm just wondering if, like, chicken was a part of, like, a plea, not a plea deal, but kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, can we keep yeah. this out of the courts? We're going to you know, give you 15 hens. <laughs> yeah, or live, or, I mean, which would be very valuable now because eggs are in demand. But mm-hmm. you get like, unli- you can either get like half a million dollars, you get unlimited tenders for the rest of your life. Yeah. There's, this reminds me of a story from out of Chicago. This was like a, probably 10 years ago now. I, I tend to think everything was last year and it certainly wasn't. But during St. Patrick's Day, Chicago is madness wall-to-wall people you can't move 
And this woman was there for the parade and just was absolutely dying, had to use the restroom and couldn't find a public place. So she just walked into somebody's house, Yeah, just like went into their back door and used the restroom. And then she was walking out and they were like, hey, and she's like, I'm so sorry, I had to use the restroom. And they were like, oh, OK. Yeah, well, just be cool. Right. <laughs> it's like, who gets a shit? It all depends on how you handle the situation. Does but... it really matter? I mean, re- like not to sound like a hippie, but it's like we're nobody's harming anything. We're all people. I think with this, it was like, okay, so he was found asleep in this person's room at like two in the morning and it was a woman's house. So I get, okay, that makes it harder. That's a little little more gray area. Mm Actually, if he was a little harder, that's a very problematic (laughs) situation. (laughs) So definitely smelled of alcohol. And when he, when she tried to wake him up, apparently just went back to sleep. (laughs) Sure, yeah. <laughs> didn't, didn't even realize the situation. Yeah. I assume he was hammered. Yeah, right? I would think so. But so the reason I'd said it hits a little close to home was like this was years ago, but I um was just out uh in I, I used to live in upstate New York and I was out in Albany one night and was out with some friends who I had just met up with, like I hadn't seen them in a long time and I was crashing mm-hmm. at their house. Um they went home before I did. And their house wasn't that far away from the bar. So I was like, I'll just come, you know, I'll just come back to the house in like an hour or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, my phone was dead. So I couldn't look up the address. And I just was kind of gambling on Mm -hmm. whether or not like this was the right house. And I was just so drunk and so tired that I just was like, you know what? I'm going to fall asleep on the couch and just hope for the best. (laughs) Uh, That's hilarious. I assume it worked out. It did, but I, I mean, it could have been bad. Like I totally- And had it not thing. worked out, do you think that's a crime? Technically a crime, but again, just depends on how you handle the situation, you know? Also like, like if- having a, something hang off your rear view mirror is technically a crime. Like I, yeah. I think I think laws are largely suggestions. <laughs> just like a, a, maybe you should do this. Maybe this would be a good way to live. Yeah. Of, and it's know. like before somebody comes for me, I understand this is a different scenario being like a white woman. Uh, but but I will say because of how some people are mistreated, I think it is my responsibility to commit more crimes because it's kind of like a fuck you. Why are you harassing those people when mm-hmm. I'm out here committing so many crimes? You yeah. fucking idiots. I'm <laughs> robbing you blind. Especially <laughs> you're like, listen, please prosecute me. I've committed at least 10 crimes this week. I keep getting off with it. You know, like I, I first of all, over, I need the press. <laughs> you're over accusing these people and they're going to jail for petty shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just want to tip the bail. I want to tip the scales a little bit. Let's even this yeah. thing out. Yeah. I, yeah, I think of my crimes as punitive. It's like, this is what you get when you don't pay attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> Cause I'm just going to try to get away with it. I've always lived yeah. that way. I, I've always been very much a, you know, um, beg for, permi- um, per, um, ask for forgiveness, ask for forgiveness, of- not permission. Yeah, that's, yeah, that that's one. my whole, yeah. I'm going to get that tattooed on my fucking face, man. <laughs> <laughs> just like a mustache. <laughs> Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I get a lip tattoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of those guys. Because, I mean, I think it would be a different situation if, like, listen, I didn't even really have a problem with it, but now the sheets are covered in barbecue sauce from the chicken nuggets that he was eating mm-hmm. and, he, and he pissed the bed. I just want some new sheets. Like, at this point. <laughs> yeah. Let's be reasonable with our punishments. Yeah, Not everything so. needs to be jail time. Come on, oh, come everyone, on. get a hold CF- of yourselves. He's the CFO of Tyson Chicken. This guy has never yeah. served a day in jail his entire life. He's got yeah. chicken money. Are you kidding? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Big chicken. <laughs> going to jail. <laughs> uh, all right, next one. Um, Sheets is reviewing its controversial smile policy that prohibits employees from having missing, broken, or badly discolored teeth. So only a crime in the sense of like it could be, just be prejudicial practices and an illegal, um, you know. Uh, what company is this? You know, Sheets. It's like the convenience store place. In, no, uh, I've Chan. never heard of that. Here's the thing. Fucking the healthcare system, even when you do have healthcare, acts like teeth are not a necessity. Like, right. like this is a luxury item that we don't deserve. I, <laughs> okay. Sick. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> it's fucking so stupid. It's like, oh, those bones, you don't need those. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, I have such the, so much anger again about the healthcare system. I don't think, I don't disagree with Sheets being like, hey, you can't have fucked up teeth. 
Can't just have a busted smile, dude. Like, <laughs> However, I think it should be 100% on them to pay for all dental work then. Right. If you're going to have the policy, then you should have like an, an exceptional dental program. <laughs> like, exceptional. And by yeah. exceptional, I mean everything is 100% free, no mm -hmm. copay. And also you're giving these people free toothpaste and uh, free toothbrushes and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Out of this so, world dental care. Yeah. Like part of the issue here is that so Sheets is is very popular in like the northeast mid-Atlantic kind of area where like think Western PA, like Ohio. Yeah, where people like are that. naturally missing. Where people are just naturally ugly. Like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they're not good looking <laughs> people. They're people of the earth, you know? They're people of the they, earth. People work, of Middle Earth. They, they're oh. covered in coal. They don't even work in coal. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just out. <laughs> and it's like fracking country too. So it's mostly just the natural gas that's destroying their grills, you know? It's yeah. It's the products they, of their environment. Probably look they... like they're melting just permanently. <laughs> yeah, I'd feel like the teeth probably isn't even the biggest mm -hmm. issue. It's no, no. Limb. It's the missing limbs. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, is your skin green? Yeah. That's, <laughs> not, that's not the issue. It's really just the yeah. snickle tooth that you've had since you were born yeah that's driving yeah. the customers away never mind the chemical order odor coming out of your pores <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you light a match near my body mm -hmm. i will combust mm -hmm. exactly <laughs> well and i get the thing is it's obviously it seems a bit classist right like mm -hmm. obviously the people that can afford it um aren't gonna have this kind of issue unless you're just a total loser and don't brush your teeth like ever and you do have the money in the coverage yeah. anyway so that's where it really becomes a problem which uh, usually rules and laws like this are to always targeting either like minorities lower income housing and stuff like that so yeah i agree mm -hmm. like if you are going to put this in place then you do really need to like step up your game a little bit but from what i know sheets is like people love it you can make like your own custom cheeseburgers there they've got oh, their nice. own proprietary snacks so I don't even really know why this is I, it, customers probably aren't complaining about this there's no way no i doubt it but i uh I if the think, prices are low enough no one cares yeah exactly and if the food's good enough <laughs> who cares if they've got bad breath although that would be kind of rough if just like man the, the 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 smell coming from across the counter right now is pretty putrid so that's going to keep customers from coming back wait here's a question how do can't they just wear a mask and say they're being careful because of COVID? Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> just, that's I know what a lot of people with, with fucking rough teeth, rough <laughs> smiles that are in that are in masks. Now, what I will I will say Problem solved. Um, on a from on a personal note, the a, a bad smile or like a really jacked up smile is one of my biggest turnoffs. Like for yeah, is it sex? Right? Yeah. Is it, how How's high this is that? One? It's pretty good. Well, until, <laughs> yeah, just, it's really when you flash them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they're like, it was good, and then it wasn't. She's like, I just don't know what to do with my smile. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, for you, what are like top top three like physical turnoffs? Because if, like I said, if things are going well, we're having a great conversation, and all of a sudden I get oh. one of these, and you got a bunch of jacked up teeth, like that's going like it, they might be over. I don't know if I can get over that. I don't know. I. I've definitely had crushes on guys with like maybe a, maybe a little bit of a maybe some teeth are not they're a little out of order. They're just shooting, um, in but they're directions. all there. They're all there. Um, and I'm kind of a sucker for the gap, the front tooth gap. Um, yeah, it's cute. <laughs> I did three guys in a row that all had that, and I was like, oh, maybe I have a type. <laughs> yeah, it just it kind of happened one day. You yeah, just, yeah, yeah. You just realized like, oh wow, that's my thing. Yeah, other uh, but ironically, the Vu guy that I'm seeing now does not uh, have that. But whatever, I'm my t I don't really have a t well. I kind of have a type. I kind of have a couple of types, but I don't really. <laughs> I've never dated anyone that is one of my two like main types, okay. which is devastating. Anyway, what are we talking about? What are deal breakers? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I was just I, I mean, it was just something I thought about when I read the article or started reading the headline. I was like, yeah, yeah teats are kind of a no deal for uh, that's a deal breaker for me. I think the only deal breaker truly is if somebody's horribly out of shape because I'm like, I'm really active. I like to hike and be outside and go for long walks and uh you know, do other sports when I have time. Ooh. Um not that walking is a sport, but so if somebody can't join me in that or if they're like super unhealthy i'm like 
not it just kind of grosses me out i know maybe that sounds mean but like if somebody's chowing down on mcdonald's every day i'm like that's not that's so unappealing to me yeah like yeah that makes sense it's unattractive I feel yeah that. So, cool all right let's gonna do it for our dumb crimes for the week uh so let's get into what you wanted to talk about um yeah actually, just a little i guess some more backstory like so where are you from originally northwest indiana this little town called cedar lake it's okay. like an hour out of chicago it's um 7,000 people, maybe. So probably not like a ton of crime in your area, right? Like growing up, maybe? Exclusive. There's so much crime. So much really? Crime. But it's like white hillbilly crime. Okay. <laughs> so we're talking about making hooch, like <laughs> like making Oh, we're talking like kind of my my family is, we're, we're all criminals. And I say that with pride. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah, it runs in the family. Like a lot, there's, there was a lot of, um, stealing cars, uh, just for fun, but like they wouldn't keep them. It would be like stealing a car and leaving it in a field. My dad had this job when he was, I think in college, he said, uh, he, he said it's the most money he's ever made. This is before there was serial numbers on car parts. Oh, okay. He worked at a car dealership and what they would do is they would at night drive one of the cars into the garage. My dad would take it apart piece by piece, like down to the fucking bolts. They would... <laughs> They would report it stolen, get the insurance money, and then later, some time later, my dad would reassemble the car, put it back on the lot, and then they would sell it. Really? Yes. That's so <laughs> thorough. That's insane. Isn't That's like that a funny? long con. That's like... Isn't that great? And one of my dad's uh, brothers burned down, I want to say, two or three of his own homes to collect insurance. Uh, I haven't so even bought a big one home. Fraud. I haven't even bought one home yet, let alone think about how. Right. I well, the homes are like four dollars in Indiana. <laughs> so uh, he did that. And then he had to f what I was told is he had to flee the state for a while because they were like, huh. You do electrical work and these were all electrical fires. So you're just really bad at your job. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like seems suspicious. You're not um, recommended by the Better Business Bureau anytime soon. And you're under you know, investigation for fraud. <laughs> yeah, no, he didn't care. My, I mean, my whole family is like just... <laughs> One time the cops... I th Look, there's like nine people in my family named Jim and uh, one time my uh, dad was home and the cops like banged on the door and my dad answers the door and they're like, is Jim Curry home? My dad's name is Jim. And he's mm -hmm. like, nope. And they're like, okay, thanks. Yeah, that's it. That's all the investigating <laughs> we needed to do. That's how dumb they are. That's how dumb they are. Time to head back to the bar. We still got yeah. our beers cool. Yeah. <laughs> they're uh -huh. open. Um, now, wait, had you ever, have you ever stolen a car before? No, not that I wouldn't. Um, I just don't know how. Oh yeah. So, I mean, I, I used to just take my parents' car all the time. Like we never stole anybody else's car, but I, when I say take, like when I was 15 and we would like, yeah. drive to the, we were, we lived about 40 minutes away from a casino and yeah. it was an 18 plus casino. So we would just like steal my parents' car at night and drive up I there. I love it. And they didn't, I they didn't serve alcohol. So they like, didn't ID you like at the door or anything. Oh, you nice. Go play table games and go play poker. And then if, Somebody came up to you and was like, hey, can we see your ID? You say, oh, I don't have it. And then they would even let you cash out. And then we would just take <laughs> our parents' car back home. And we like never got caught. They were just That's very, hilarious. Sound, very sound sleepers. Uh, the fact that they had installed a back door to the basement, probably one of the worst decisions mm -hmm. ever made mm -hmm. <laughs> in sure. their entire lives. <laughs> I, I just remembered, um, I guess technically this is stealing, but mm -hmm. it's more like borrowing sure. without permission. I, um, my parents owned a marina for a while when I was a kid and, uh, during the summer, like we stayed, we, we stayed there during the summer cause it was like a campground. It was just easier cause we're there from fucking 6am till midnight or whatever every day. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, it was a, it was a, in, it was the only inlet on the lake. Like it was a proper marina and we had all these boats and the slips. And when I would do at night, my parents would go to sleep and then I would sneak out and I would, uh, if I had like friends over, I'd be like, let's take out Jeff's boat. It was Anybody's. just like whatever customers had <laughs> for renting slips from us. I would just go into our little, we, we had like a little bait shop and stuff. And that's where we had like keys and things. And I'd just like go grab somebody's keys and take their boat out for a spin in the middle of the night. 
And they're just, this is supposed to be like trusting, right? Like we're leaving our oh. vote in the hands of yes. you guys because you're responsible. You know, you have. They're paying to leave their vote there. <laughs> and what's even better, what is even better, Corey, is that I got my voting license when I was nine years old. I can show it to you. This is not an exaggeration. It was absolutely, I got, I was licensed to drive a boat and then after i got certified i think they didn't want they didn't intend for any nine-year-olds to be licensed so the next year can't imagine they, why <laughs> right so the following year they made the law that you had to be 16 and have a driver's license in order to get a boating license well i was grandfathered in so not only was i stealing people's boats i was like 10 years old doing damn it. i wasn't this young. wasn't we only had the marina till i was 14 so it wasn't <laughs> I was not 17, 18 doing this. I'm 10. Fucking You're the like coolest that. kid in elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a cool new bike with training wheels. Fuck you, Todd. I've got a boat. I got yeah, like I've got 10 a whole, boats. We've got so many boats. Do you want to take out a pontoon, a jet boat? We could jet ski. That's a little dangerous at night, but whatever. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to go out there and have some fun. That's great. Ridiculous. Yeah, so uh, stealing boats, and then um, so I had asked. Oh, you I'm actually wearing. I didn't even realize this. I'm wearing the shirt from my parents' marina. Oh, that's great! Nice. Or like merch shirt. Um, anyway, <laughs> what a what a fun little keepsake that you've had. Mm -hmm. that you have. That's oh, amazing. We have you still so have many. It. Thanks. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Thinks it was my dad's. He's a skinny guy. <laughs> now, how many siblings do you have? Three brothers, two older, one younger. Okay, and now were you guys? Uh, how far apart are you in age? My two older brothers are like eight and nine years older than me. They're from my dad's first marriage. Okay. And my younger brother is five years younger than me. Oh, so you guys probably weren't all like hanging out a bunch like together, right? Or were you? It yeah, like off, and, off and on. I mean, my older brothers were kind of like not around the marina as much, you know, because why would you stick around and volunteer for child labor when you have a driver's license? Mm -hmm. um, and then my little brother and I uh, were put to work. 365 days a year. Thanks, mom and dad. Uh, yeah. That's got, the <laughs> I mean, work, I, the work at the ethic time I have now. Yeah. yeah. I cherish it now because I'm like, oh, I am so good at a lot of things, or I'm at least like adept at a lot of things. Adept like is also stealing so good. boats. <laughs> <laughs> like stealing yeah. boats, but like yeah. doing, like I would work on boats with my dad a little. Like he would work on them and then he would have me take it out into the lake and test drive it. And sometimes they broke down and I had to fucking paddle a ski boat. <laughs> the marina across yeah. a lake where there's other boats zipping by when i'm 10 you yeah. know um but i would like give him a little diagnostic like oh this is what the sound it made this is what happened you know yeah um, i just want to go to a playground i just want to play with other kids and we uh, had a playground there we had a playground and i was like not even i'm like well i guess i'm picking up cigarette butts on 10 acres all day today <laughs> i guess that's just, my job just taking a little rip off of yeah. one when you're 12 just yeah, yeah, yeah no oh i've always hated cigarettes they're so disgusting yeah you're just like um, a lady yeah. of the lake. You're like, yeah, I don't work on these boats. And they just got like three cigarette butts in your mouth. Like, it all I'm like up to hardened one. at 11. Yeah. <laughs> Badass bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the reason I asked was because like, so my brothers and I, we were like very close in age. I have two. And so we all just did mm -hmm. dumb crimes like together for the most part, because all of our friends were the same age. And I it was it. just too many yeah, too many boys hanging out together with too much time on their hands, you know? Mm -hmm. So maybe if we were like a little farther apart in age, we wouldn't have had as much, but it was also great for just brainstorming sessions. You know, when you have that yeah. many idiots together in one place, like we're bound to come up with some really dumb shit to do. Yeah. Like, we went through the gauntlet. We went through like basically, you know, all kinds of vandalism, stealing stuff, I lighting love things on fire. Yeah, there was nothing we couldn't do. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. I love vandalism and arson. I mean, those are my top two, probably. <laughs> Just, <laughs> let's ruin something and then light it on fire. <laughs> Perfect. Even better. Wow, chef's kiss. Yeah. So in, after you got done stealing boats, like, did you get into any other like um, cr criminal activity like while you were living in, in Indiana? Not a lot more. Well, I moved out here when I was 19. Oh, okay. Um, I do have a really fun crime story that was my parents. If you're, I oh, mean, it's man. not my story, but like my that's parents okay. recently told me this. And I, I, uh, if you want to hear that, cause I'm like, well, that's going to be more exciting than me. That's doing. juicy. Yeah. Let's hear it. Uh, so when I was a kid, my parents and my family still owns it, but my parents are no longer part of it. Um, 
my family owns a biker bar. And when I was a kid, my parent before we had the marina, we had the bar. Like that we were full owners at the time. Your family's um, badass, by the way. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought you were cool from the first time that we met, but it's only gotten better. Like, I almost don't want to, f- I'm never going to fuck with you ever. I'm going to assume <laughs> if I say the wrong thing to you, I feel like I'm going to get stabbed now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's been some stabbing. <laughs> <laughs> there's been a little stabby stabby in the family. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, uh, Okay, so my parents owned this marine or the, owned the biker bar, and my my mom owned it before she married my dad because uh, it's from her side of the family. Mm-hmm. And so when my dad started, when he married in and started helping with things, he there was some things he didn't know about. For example, uh, my parents had uh, it's it, gambling is illegal in Indiana, and mm-hmm. so they had this like poker machine that, unbeknownst to my dad, was. Uh, there was a deal with some mafia guys in Illinois that it was there. Like there was a deal for them to have their poker machine at the bar. And my dad did not know that. Well, uh, part of, part of the thing was it's since it's illegal to gamble, um, you can't do payouts. Like you just play for fun, but for some of the regular customers, we did payouts. Okay. So, uh, which is bad, but but we would oh, get that money later. So it's like whatever they won, we would get. So it's like, well, we can pay them out. Fine. Yeah. So uh, yeah. my dad, again, not knowing about the mob ties, he's bartending one day and this, this guy a, comes in. A detail yeah. you, you might want to like <laughs> get some riff. You can't talk. Well, how do you bar. say, how do you say, hey, uh, now that we're married. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's gonna be some guys coming around are they are you banging them oh no 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 but they might kill us at some yeah. point yeah <laughs> yeah we just have deals with them we're wheeling and dealing here mm-hmm. uh so my dad is uh working at the bar one day and this guy comes in and he's like hey um i am like a you know new business owner or whatever i'm a just a like mom and pop shop and i have a poker machine would you want to swap out the one you have for the one i have oh, no. because i'm trying to start up my business and my dad's like sure dude we're gonna return this um yeah, i'm trying to support happen. small businesses yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just putting money back in the local economy yeah so he makes a deal with this other guy to have his poker machine there well then fast forward, my grandma is bartending one day and uh, an undercover FBI agent comes in who who had we later found out had been tipped off by the mafia guys whose machine we had gotten rid of. So this undercover FBI agent comes in and sits down at the bar and asks my grandma, hey, does that poker machine pay out like posing as a customer? And my grandma's mm-hmm. like, yeah. <laughs> tons of money we get- and he's like <laughs> he's like excellent thank you for that information finishes his drink leaves. no grandma no you read it on the face. i know <laughs> and the reason my grandma was bartending was because well she was also part owner but she was bartending because my parents were getting ready to go to a wedding mm-hmm. and they were oh here's another detail so they were getting ready to go to a wedding so they were at our house which was next door and also it was one of the regulars uh wedding so most of the customers and the bartenders and whatever were going to this wedding so they needed one extra person to cover because it was like my grandma's not going to be lifting kegs and whatever so they need one extra person to cover so they asked this guy another one of the regulars so like hey can you fill in and bartend for the night and he's like I can't, I don't have a bartender's license. And they're like, oh, you can borrow Jeff's or who I'm forgetting who <laughs> it was. They're like, it's just one night. It's not a big deal. You can Piece borrow. Paper, not a big deal. Yeah. Meanwhile, you can borrow his bartending license. Worst yeah. possible timing for this. The castle's unguarded. And then that's when the FBI <laughs> comes in. It's like literally exactly. everybody. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Couldn't have been more so, susceptible to siege. <laughs> so he's also bartending with my grandma. So undercover FBI agent leaves comes back a while later with county cops with fbi agents with city cops and they're like they come in and uh they go to my grandma they they were like hey you know you're under arrest whatever and she's like oh my god this is my this is my daughter and my son-in-law's place i have to call them like whatever so my grandma uh my grandma or the other bartender i think the other bartender called my grandma's freaking out because they're arresting her Mm -hmm. the um 
which my dad later told me her only concern the whole time. She's like, will I still be able to vote? And they're like, calm down, lady. Because uh, <laughs> we need to change the healthcare system in this country. <laughs> my family is like super politically involved. Uh, it, as I encourage more criminals to be it, it's good. Yeah. Um, so the bartender calls my dad. The FBI agents are standing next to him. So he can't say anything. And he's like, Jim, get up here right fucking now. And my dad's like, we're getting ready to go to this wedding. And he's like, get here now come up here and so my parents are like oh something's wrong so they both come up to the bar they come in the back door my mom stays in the kitchen because there's like you come in through the kitchen and then there's another door into the main bar she's staying in the kitchen because she's like i don't want to know what the fuck's going on right so she walks or my dad walks into the bar sees my grandma's been arrested and he's like what the fuck and they're like who's whose place is this and my dad goes mine because he's just like <laughs> on one yeah. and they're like fantastic you're under arrest too <laughs> And then they find out the bartender, they ask for his bartending permit. And he's like, oh, I'm borrowing somebody else's. They're like, fantastic. <laughs> You're under arrest too. So everybody's just narking themselves out like one by one. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. So they all get. Anybody else in this bar want to admit to something that they've done yeah. while we're here <laughs> for pride? So they all get like booked but it goes it it went the process went fast enough that like they get arrested they get bailed out uh they're they end up paying they end up later one of the charges got dropped but they ended up paying like hundreds of dollars in fines or whatever thousands of dollars i, th I think i want to say it was like eight grand or something um anyway whatever it was so they're then released that night and then my parents get to the wedding late as fuck they show up sure. for the last part of the reception in and everyone's handcuffs. like yeah and this is in the 80s by the way so there's no you're not texting people you know yeah. and the wedding party's like why are you so late what the fuck and my parents are like oh funny story uh -huh. and they tell the story and then they also tell the bartender who's license it was they're like also you're about to be arrested as well you need to turn yourself in <laughs> for lending out your fucking bartending license and he's like jesus fucking christ um and then after that they oh one of the things was they seized the poker machine because they're like you know you can't have this anymore mm -hmm. so uh it it had been so lucrative to have the poker machine there my parents are like okay no problem take the poker machine back and we had a basement <laughs> that we used for storage. And it was, if you, you come in the front door, you have to go all the way past the bar. And then you turn right in a, to this door through the bar. And to the right is the basement. And to the left is the patio, which the, the walls of the patio go, they're like 10 feet high. So you can't see anybody or their illegal activities there. Right. Um, so, so that, I'm saying that because it's like if somebody was coming in and out of the door beyond the bar, you wouldn't you wouldn't know where they were coming from. You would assume they were coming from the porch. So sure. after the machine is seized, my parents set up a poker table in the basement and they just let people gamble there and they take a cut of that and they set up a little bell. So if like cops or anyone they didn't know, whatever, because it was like a local watering hole. So if like people that looked suspicious came in, they would ring the bell and then everyone would come back up into the bar. Everybody, yeah, everybody just like cover up their stuff, get the cards away, put the money away. Yeah. And then just and like act casual, everybody, because we've yeah. done a good job of that in the past. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> and bonus crime, uh, two bonus crimes. One, you had to sell a certain amount of food to be to have a liquor license that allows you to be open on Sundays. Okay. And my mom would count things like chips and literally ice as food. Mm -hmm. Because she's like, oh, here we have we have tons of food. We have five different items. There's Enjoy microwavable our... hot dogs and there's chips and there's ice. That's food. Enjoy our ice buffet and some Chinese <laughs> chicken. <laughs> exactly. And the patio. And I don't know what it looked like when at that time. Uh, but at some point it was rebuilt. My dad rebuilt it. And we needed a big support beam for the side because it was the bar was like kind of on the side of a hill. Mm -hmm. And uh he was iron working at the time in Chicago and they were rebuilding part of Wrigley field. So he just went cruised past the uh, construction site and stole a, an iron beam oh, hell yeah. <laughs> from the construction site. So part of the bar is made from the old Wrigley field. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they're just going to leave it out, that's, we used to do that shit all the time when we were that's kids. We would 
go to construction yeah. sites and we would just steal stuff to build like because we used to skateboard a lot so we would build like jumps and, and rails yeah. and i mean that's how my brother re-roofed his house i mean you just go you cruise by and you just take supplies and there wasn't a sign on it that said we couldn't take it it's just here you know it's just laying no shit. around it's there what happens with a dresser that's sitting outside? You could take it. You take it. Also, like my family justifies it in that they're like construction sites are insured if something gets stolen. Yeah, they're they're covered. Yeah, and they're taking, like the yeah. system helps us here. Yeah. Who says they're stealing them? They might be borrowing them. Who knows how long you need a roof for? We're just like twenty yeah. years, and we'll yeah. get it <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll bring it back. <laughs> so wait, what happened with the mob poker machine? Oh, that was just the, that the was, was gone just okay. and then the other one was seized. Well, as long as we didn't have the competitors one, I guess it just didn't matter because everything, yeah. the new one was seized. Yeah. I was just, I mean, I don't know a lot about the mob, but anything I've seen in TV and movies is that like, oh, okay, no, we, we're fine with just somebody else's po <laughs> poker machine being. Yeah, they were not fine with that. Uh <laughs> So there you go. Yeah, that's I I was telling somebody the story by the way a while back right after my parents told it and they're like, "Well, well, but how would the mob you're telling me the mob talk to the FBI?" I'm like, "Do you understand how our political system works? Do you have any there? Yes." Oh, so wait, do you yes. think that the mob not like told the police that there was a poker machine there? Yes. Yes. Oh, I didn't pick yes. that part up. Sorry. I yeah. wasn't, I didn't, yeah, I didn't get that. Part. Oh yeah. No, no, it's all good. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I thought that like some local dude was just like, you know, there was a swap and then there was mm -hmm. no consequences because of that. I thought the police just came randomly. No, or no, no. Else. God, just when you thought you could trust the mob. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just, uh, you know, just when you thought you could just, you could just rely on criminals, on, <laughs> on career criminals to do that. I right know. Thing. And here we are. Yeah. Here we are. Shit, that's great. It's a sad day in America when you can't rely on them. You can't trust anybody anymore. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing that. That's, that's yeah, so fun. I love that. And all the I, I, your family sounds like a hoot. Like uh, I, yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, look, it's chaos, and I love it so much. It's so fun. Yeah, it makes you who you are. Um, yeah. So before we get out of here, uh, just plug all your stuff. Let people know where they can find you. Yeah. Um, I have a weekly show on Sirius XM called Long Story Long uh, that drops on Thursdays on channel 771. It's their She's So Funny channel. And then it drops on iTunes and all that stuff a month later. And I've got a lot of good episodes banked. Um, really fucking cool people on there. And uh, I also, please follow me on Instagram. I need to get my Instagram numbers up because that's what I need to book more gigs. Mm -hmm. My Instagram is Olympian Lisa Curry. And I don't, I have a, an, a curse when it comes to technology and I don't have the collab feature. So it's almost impossible for me to get my own followers up. Wait, what? You don't have, yeah, like, I just don't have, I can if tag you post people. A clip, if you post a clip, you can't mm -hmm. like invite somebody to be a collaborator mm -hmm. on it. Nope. I've been posting clips regularly, consistently for over six weeks now. And I've picked up 100 followers. Damn. All right. Well, I'll, maybe I'll make your Kill grandma me. a collaborator on the yeah. this or yeah. She seems like a helpful lady. Yeah. <laughs> maybe if you hit collab, I wonder if I'd be able to accept it. We'll give it a shot. Yeah. We'll make it happen. Anyway. Yeah. Olympia cool. and Lisa Curry. That's all my stuff. Hell yeah, dude. Um, well, if you want to check out any of the stuff that I got going on, it's uh, CoreyDavid.com for upcoming tour dates. Uh, my socials are fake Corey David with a K. And um, again, thank you everybody that came out to the Houston show for Interrogation True Crime Stories. Uh, we'll have another one in Denver in March when I get back from Vietnam. And then the next one we have booked after that is down at Dry Heat Comedy Club in Albuquerque. So just check my website for the dates on that. You can buy tickets for that there as well. And I think we're actually doing one in Santa Fe as well like on that same little run so that'll be really fun nice. um yeah and if you want to follow the instagram page for that it's at interrogation true crime we post podcast clips live show clips and um just like, try to have some fun talking about crime stuff so um yeah thank you very much for joining i love show. it thank you oh, yeah